Today we will talk about chapter 27 lectures to magnetic field and magnetic flux. In this part, we will talk about the magnetic force and a current carrying conductor. As you know, the magnetic force on a charged particle Q moving in the magnetic field B with the velocity V is given by the following expression. F equal Q, V cross B. As you know, Q is the charge of the particle, B is the vector velocity of the particle, B is the magnetic field. As we discussed in the previous lecture, we said that the vector force is perpendicular to both the vector velocity and the vector magnetic field. And regarding the magnitude, it's going to be Q, V, B, sine theta, and Q in absolute value. Since the electric current I represents the motion of electrons, we expect that the current carrying conductor experiences a magnetic field when it's placed in the magnetic, uh, experiences a magnetic force when it's, it's uh, placed in the magnetic field. Because the current is dQ over dt. So if there is a force on a point of charge Q, so that means if we are talking about a conductor carrying a current, a current carrying conductor. So we will talk also about the force exerted by the magnetic field on the current carrying conductor. So as we know, as we know, the force is the sum of Q for the conductor, for example, for sure. For the conductor, the magnetic force is gonna be the sum of QI multiplied by the drift velocity across the vector magnetic field. When we talk about straight portion or straight segment, we will consider a straight segment of wire of length L and the cross-sectional area of the, of the wire A. This straight segment carry current I in the uniform magnetic field. If we say that VD is the drift velocity of the charge Q, then the magnetic force on the wire is given by the sum of QI multiplied by VD cross B. Here, Vd is equal to the vector L divided by the time, or delta T, we can say. And L is a vector pointing in the direction of the current, conventional current, and has a magnitude, the length of uh, the straight uh, segment. So what we can say? We can say that the force is going to be the sum of Qi over T multiplied by the cross product between the vector L and uh, B. What is this quantity? This quantity is only the current I through uh, the, the straight segment. Here, L is a vector in the direction of the current and has a magnitude equal to the length uh, of the segment, as I said right now. The above equation applies only for straight uh, segment. So what is the force on the straight segment? F equal I, L cross B. B is the magnetic field. L is a vector, has a magnitude, the, the, the length of the straight segment, and it's directed with the current. I is the electric current, of course, is an in ampere. In case we have a non-straight segment, we consider an arbitrary shaped wire segment in the uniform magnetic field. For a very small infinitesimal displacement, ds, for an infinitesimal displacement, ds, the magnetic force would be dv, as we discussed in the previous example, uh, chapters, chapter 21 and 27. So it's given by df equal i ds cross b instead of l, because we will talk about infinitesimal displacement, ds, to give an element force df. Now, if we want the total force through the total, uh, exerted on the total wire, non straight wire, so we have to integrate over the length of the wire, that means from A to B. So we're gonna get F equal the integral of I dS cross B. Okay, so we are done. If we want the magnitude of F, so it's gonna be I, I is constant, dS B sine theta. And theta is the angle between dS and B. Now, if a curved wire carry a current, if we have a curved, we can say that the force, as we said right now, is the path integral from A to B 
of I D S cross B. I is constant, so it can be out of the out of the line integral, and we're gonna get the integral of D S. What is the integral of D S? Is the vector sum. Call it L prime. So we denote L prime by the vector sum of the S. Okay? So it's uh, extending from the point A, the starting point of the of the Y, to the ending point of the of the Y. And this vector is called L. L prime, L prime, sorry. The magnitude of L prime is the displacement, is the distance, is the straight distance between A and B. So that means we are talking about this. Okay. The magnitude of the displacement. So if we have a curved wire, the force can be as the following. F equal I L prime cross B, where L prime is the vector sum of the S. Okay. And we will take some examples. Now, if we have a closed loop, what are we going to get? In the closed loop, the integral of the S to a closed loop, if we start from here, we make ds, 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 and we come back to the same position. So we have, we are talking about closed loop. What is the path integral of a closed loop is zero. The displacement is zero. True. Okay, so what will be the force on a closed loop? So the force on a closed loop will be zero. So the total magnetic force on any closed current loop in uniform magnetic field is zero. It's okay. So let's let me summarize here. As a summary, we can write. Okay, when we talk about point charge, in uniform magnetic field, what would be the force? F equal U V cross V as vectors. Okay, so that means the magnitude F equal absolute value of Q multiplied by the speed multiplied by the vector B, magnitude multiplied by sine theta. But when we talk about, uh, uh, and the direction, the direction is coming from the right-hand rule. When we talk about a current carrying wire, Current carrying wire. What are we going to get? F equal I line integral of ds cross B. This is in general for straight portion. Straight portion. This expression will be I L cross B. For a curved portion, this expression can be. F equal I L prime cross B with L prime is the vector sum, sorry, without, not close, the vector sum of the S from A to B. When we talk about a closed loop or closed circuit, F equal zero. So this is the summary of uh, of the lecture. Let's move. We will take some examples. In this example, we have a wire band into the shape of semicircle of radius r forms a closed circuit. So directly, what would be the force here? We have a closed circuit, so that means the total force exerted on the loop on the closed circuit is zero because it's closed as we said right now. The circuit lies in the xy plane and the and a uniform magnetic field is presented along the positive y direction. Find the, magnet, uh, the magnetic force on a straight portion and on a curved portion. So our question is divided into two, uh, two questions. So for the first question, we have to calculate the magnetic force exerted on the curved portion. For the second force, we have to, for the second question, we have to calculate the magnetic force on a curved portion. Let's start step by step. So this is our our diagram or our circuit, as we said here, for the straight 
straight portion. What do we have? This is our straight portion. Let's draw at first the vector for the straight portion. The force, as you know, is I L cross B. Or for the magnitude, it's going to be I L B sine theta. Okay, what is the vector L? The vector L is a vector pointing in the same direction as the current, and its magnitude is the length of uh, the length of the current uh, of the of the of the segment. So what is this? What is this L? It's gonna be the radius multiplied by two. So it's two r. It's the diameter. It's okay. What is now the angle between L and the vector B? As you see here, it's 90 degrees. So theta equal 90 degrees. So sine theta, it's gonna be sine theta, so it's gonna be one. So what will be the force of straight portion? F is gonna be I two R multiplied by B without the sine because sine 90 is one. So this is for the straight portion. What is the direction of this force? To get the direction, we have to apply the right hand rule because it's cross product. Put your fingers of your right hand toward the vector L, curl your fingers upward toward B, and your thumb will be out of the page. So the force at one, F is out of the page. Okay, using the right hand rule, good. It's okay, so this is F1, exerted on the straight portion. So now we will do the same thing, but for the curved portion. Let's do the same thing, but for the curved portion. For the curved portion. I will do, I will answer this question using two different uh, methods. First method. As you know, the force on straight portion is I L prime cross B. And L prime is a vector sum of ds. So this is ds. DS, 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 DS. So we will start from this point. Let's say this is point A and to the point B. So the vector L prime is the vector sum from A to B of uh, DS. Okay. So it's a vector extending from the point A to the point B. So this is our vector L prime for the curved portion. Okay. And has a magnitude, it's uh, the displacement. L prime in magnitude equal the distance, the straight distance from A to B, so it's going to be 2R also. So what we can write, we can write that the magnitude of the force Q on the curved portion is going to be I multiplied by L prime, and L prime in our case it's 2R multiplied by B, and the angle between L and the vector B, it's 90 degrees. Theta is 90 degrees, so without writing the sign. It's okay. So this is the magnitude of the second vector. Now, let's apply the right-hand rule to get the direction. Put your fingers of your right hand toward, toward L, curl your fingers upward toward B, and the force will be into the page. Okay, you see here that the two, uh, the two forces, F1 and F2, have the same magnitude, I to RB, I to RB, one is into the page for the curved portion, one is out of the page for the straight portion, so their sum will be zero. So this is the first method. Let's try to do the same, uh, to do the same question with the second method. What we're gonna get? F equal I ds, the path integral from A to B, ds cross B. Or we can say in magnitude F equal I, the path integral of ds, b, sine, theta. It's OK. What are we going to get? We will write. Uh, OK.
So we're gonna get the following I the S now. The S is the arc of circle. So the S is equivalent to the radius R multiplied by d theta. Okay, multiplied by d theta. This is the radius of this is the arc of circle. So we will write from uh, the path integral of R d theta multiplied by d. And don't forget that we have sine theta. Okay, from where to where? The first angle is starting, our variable at first is the theta, the angle. So starting from here and going over the arc of circle to the point B, our angle changes from zero to pi. Okay, so F will be equal I, R, B, all of them are constant. The integration of uh, sine theta d theta from zero to uh, from zero to pi, so it's going to get uh, minus cosine theta because the primitive of uh, sine is minus cosine from zero to pi. So we're going to get minus cosine pi, which is one plus cosine zero, which is one. So we're going to get two i r b. This is the magnitude of the force. We can do the same thing to determine the direction. Put your fingers of your right hand toward ds, curl your fingers upward toward b, and your thumb will be into the page. So we have the same result using different ways. Okay, good. Let's move now. Okay, so okay, so we have a quick quiz. In this quiz, the four wires shown below all carry the same current. So I for the fourth case for the fourth case is the same. Okay, from the point A to B through the same magnetic field, and the magnetic field is the same. B is the same. In the four cases, rank the wire according to the magnitude of the magnetic force exerted on them from the greatest to the least. Here we have a curved portion and straight portion. For the straight portion, we have a straight portion, for example, in the B. For the straight portion, F equal I L cross uh, I L B sine theta. I L B sine theta. B is the same. I is the same. But L is not the same in the three cases. Sine theta is not the same in the three cases. So which one will make the difference? I L is this, uh, so I B is the same. However, L sine theta makes the difference. Okay, let's try to discuss this case. This is for three portion in the case B. This is the vector L. Its magnitude is the the length of the ray uh, of the straight portion uh, and this is our vector b and this is our vector l this is our angle theta so l sine theta is where it's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so this is, let's take another color, so this portion is L sine theta, L sine theta, this distance is L sine theta, L sine theta in this case how much is 3.5 centimeters, so F is going to be 3.5 multiplied by I B, okay, so this is F in the second part, 3.5 multiplied by I B. Let's come back to the curved portions. Okay, let's continue with this because it's, it will be considered as positive. So this circuit in the circuit C is composed of uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, straight portions. However, some of the portions are directed perpendicular to the magnetic field and some of them are directed, uh, are directed uh, parallel to the magnetic field. For these two portions, parallel to the magnetic field, the angle between L and the vector B is zero. Sine zero is zero. So these two, there is no force exerted on these two portions. 
So what would be the total force exerted on this uh, wire or this portion or, or on this uh, segment or on this circuit? The total force would be the sum of the force exerted on the portion one, portion three, portion five. So L, we can write, uh, sorry, F can be F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5. However, there is no force on the second portion and the fourth portion. Why? Because theta equal zero or 180. Okay, so sign zero is zero. So F, it would be the sum of these forces. However, these uh, portions are in the same direction, perpendicular to V. So the total force is going to be I, the total displacement, B, L, sine theta. And L is what? L is this distance. This is L. OK? L sine theta. Sine theta, how much? Theta, how much here? Theta is 90 because L is in this direction. L is in this direction. L1, L2 in this direction. L3 in this direction. Okay, uh, sorry, L3 and L5. Good. So we have L is 4 centimeters. So the total force on this diagram will be 4 I B. Okay, now let's move to the curved portions. Let's come back to the figure A. In the figure A, what is our vector? A curved, so that means F equal I L prime I V I V L prime sine theta. Where is L prime? L prime is a vector extending from the point A to the point B. This is our vector L prime. Now, what is the angle between uh, L and B? This is our angle theta. This is our vector B. Okay. Sine theta is where? This is our sine theta. Sine theta is where? This is L sine theta. L prime, sorry. L prime sine theta. L prime sine theta, how much? It's going to be three. Okay. It's going to be three. So F. At the case A, it's going to be 3B I or IB. Okay, 3IB. Now let's move to this uh, example. This is our vector L prime, and this is our vector magnetic field B. And this portion is, uh, and this is the portion. L prime sine theta. L prime sine theta. How much L prime sine theta? According to the figure, it's nearly 1.7 or 1.8. 1.8 meter. So we can write that F equal I B L prime sine theta. And it's going to be 1.8 I B. And like that, we can rank from the greatest to the lowest. What is the greatest? The greatest is 4IB, this is for FC, is greater than FB, it's greater than uh, FA, and which is greater than FD. Okay, so let's move. This is a good question. Now when we talk about the torque, as you know from physics one, the torque is the vector displacement cross F. What is our objective is to calculate the force and then to determine the lever arm and then to determine the torque exerted on the wire or on the loop. We will consider here a uniform magnetic field in the plan of a rectangular loop. We have a closed loop. The total force, as you know, on the closed loop is zero because it's a closed. Let's see. We consider a rectangular loop <coughs> carrying a current I in the presence of uniform magnetic field B. 
directly parallel to the parallel of the loop. For a current carrier conductor, the force, as you know, is I L cross B, which has a magnitude I L B sine theta. Let's discuss the side one. The side one, our vector L is in this direction, L1. L1 makes an angle 180 with respect to the magnetic field B. So sine 180 is zero. So the force is zero exerted on the side one. Let's see what do we have about the side three. This is the vector L. The angle between B and L is zero. Sine zero is zero. So there is no force exerted on the, the side one and three by the magnetic field B. Okay, so the force on the side one and three is zero. Why? Because the angle in one case is 180 and the angle is zero between the vector L and the vector B. Now let's discuss the side two. The vector L in this direction, L2. The angle between B and L is 90. Okay. So we can say that the force is I L B, I L B, and L in our case is the length of the segment. So it's going to be I A B sine 90 and sine 90, as you know, is one. So the force on the side two is going to be I A B. What about the side three and the side four? L is in this direction, up with the direction of the conversion accurate. So B and uh, L makes an angle 90. We have the same thing. The force equal I L B and, R, uh, and L in our case is A. So we're gonna get uh, I A B. However, the direction, as you know, for the side two, L is down, B to the right, the force is up. So F2 is out out of the page. What about the force on the on the fourth side? L is up, B to the right, the force is into. Two forces have the same magnitude, but opposite in direction, their sum is for sure is zero. And we are in agreement with what we said in the previous lecture, that, uh, in the previous uh, part of the lecture, the total force exerted on the closed loop is zero. Okay, now you see here that we have an out, uh, outward force and, in, uh, and into the page uh, force. What happened to this? If you pull from this side and you push to this side, on this side, so what's happened to this loop? This loop will rotate. Okay, so there is a rotational motion. Each force produces a torque about the point O. F2 has a lever arm B over 2. Its torque is directed clockwise. F4 has a lever arm B over 2. Its torque is also cl uh, clockwise. The two forces produces a total torque about the point O, and this total torque is maximum, and it's equal IAB over 2, uh, IAB multiplied by the magnetic field. Each one has IAB multiplied by B over 2, IAB multiplied by B over 2, so the total torque will be IAB multiplied by B. What do you think about uh, the width multiplied by the length of the, of the, of the rectangle? It's going to be the area. So A equal A multiplied by B, it's the area of the loop. And why we talk about maximum torque? Because B is perpendicular to B is, uh, is parallel to the plane of the loop, and it's perpendicular to the side two and four. To side two and four, or we can say parallel to the plane of the loop. Okay, what will be the total uh, the total torque? The total torque, uh, the maximum torque is going to be I A B. Now we will propose to denote this quantity by mu. And this quantity, the current multiplied by the area of the loop, it's called the magnetic dipole moment. Its unit is ampere meter square. So in this case, we can write that the torque is mu multiplied by B. And of course, as you know, the torque has a unit newton meter or ampere 
meter square Tesla. Okay, this equation is only valid when the magnetic field is parallel to the plane of the loop. That means uh, that means uh, <coughs> maximum torque. The rotation uh, the rotation is clockwise and can be reversed by the direction uh, uh, by reversing the direction of it. Okay, so this is like specific case, special case. Now we will try to generalize. When B makes an angle theta with perpendicular to the plan, F2 equal F4 equal I A B, each force produces uh, has a produces a torque about the point O, and with a lever arm B2, B over 2 sine theta, like we did before, so that the, 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 the torque is gonna be I A B I A B multiplied by the magnetic field sine theta. This quantity is the area. Okay, so it's gonna be I A B sine theta. As you know, the torque is a vector. So we have to think about this sine theta. This sine theta will uh, come back with the with results from the cost product. Okay, B makes an angle theta with perpendicular to the plan. F1 and F3, both of them are equal. I B multiplied by the magnetic field cosine theta. Each force produces a torque about the point O. However, these two forces are opposite in direction F1 and F3 are parallel to the axis of rotation as we see here. This is F3 and this is F, uh, F1. Both of them are uh, parallel to the axis of rotation, so the tor their torque is zero. Okay, so their torque is zero. Why? Because these two forces are parallel to the axis of rotation. We have F2 upward, F4 downward. So this uh, rectangular loop will make rotational motion with respect to the point O or to this axis. These two forces are parallel to the axis of rotation, so there is no torque. They don't produce any torque. So what we can say, we can say that the torque is IAB sine theta. We know that theta is the angle between the magnetic field B and the normal to the plan, which is the vector area A or the magnetic dipole moment U. We can say that a conventional expression for the torque exerted on the loop based in uniform magnetic field is tau equal I A cross B or mu cross B. The vector mu, is called the vector vector type uh, 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 magnetic dipole moment. Its magnitude is I multiplied by the the, uh, the surface area A. Its direction uh, the direction is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, and the sense determined by the right hand rule. How to determine the right hand? How to determine the direction of the vector area A or the vector uh, magnetic dipole moment? Wrap your fingers of your right hand around the perimeter of the loop. In the direction of the current and your thumb extends in the direction of mu or a. So here you see here that this is vector mu. Let's make a summary. Let's make a short summary. What do we said? We said that the vector torque is I A cross B which is equal mu cross b. What do we call this? Vector area. How is it? Perpendicular to the surface of the loop, to the plan of the loop. For example, if our loop in this plan and the xy plan, what is the vector area A? This is the vector area A. Its magnitude or let's say this is L and W, the length or and the width, its magnitude is equal L multiplied by the length, W multiplied by the length. What do we call this vector? Is the dipole magnetic Dipole moment. Mu equal I A. And it's also perpendicular to the plan of the loop. Okay. Now let's talk about the magnitude of the torque. It's going to be I 
a b sine theta or as a function of uh, the magnetic dipole uh, the, the dipole moment is going to be mu b sine theta it's okay good we are done the unit of the torque as you know meter per uh, newton meter now if we have n terms of wires so if a coil consists of n terms of wires each carrying the same current and enclosing the same area, the total magnetic dipole moment of the coil will be multiplied by 10, by n, sorry. So mu of the coil is going to be n multiplied by mu of the loop. It's going to be n multiplied by i a. Okay. What about the total torque exerted on the coil or on the n, n terms? It's going to be n multiplied by mu of the loop multiplied by b, or it's going to be like that, N I A plus B. Okay, for a magnetic field B parallel to the plane theta equal ninety, sine equal sine ninety equal one, the torque is maximum. For the magnetic field parallel to the plane of the of the loop, the torque is minimum, and which is equal to zero. We are done. If we talk about the energy now. When a magnetic dipole changes orientation in the uniform magnetic field B, the field does work on it. Here we have to be very careful. We said before that the field, the magnetic field does not work, but does not work on a particle of charge, charged particle, a moving charged particle. Okay, so when a, when a magnetic dipole changes orientation in uniform magnetic field, the field does work on it. In infinitesimal angular displacement d theta, the work will be the element dW. And it's given by dW is equal minus du. And from the other side, dW is minus tau d theta. And tau, as you know, is mu b sine theta. So we're going to get the difference in the potential energy, u2 minus u1. It's going to be the path integral or the line integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of mu b sine theta d theta. As you know, the primitive of sine is minus cosine, so we're going to get uh, the potential energy to be minus mu b cosine. Mu is vector, b is vector, and we have a cosine. So we can write that the potential energy minus mu dot or scalar b. It's okay. Mu is a vector. When, 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 uh, when uh, the energy is max, if theta between mu and b equals zero. When mu is max, uh, u is min, when theta between u and b is 90. And we are done. You see in this graph or in this figure, u as a function of theta. If theta is zero, if theta is zero, the potential energy will be minus mu b. And this is a stable equilibrium. The potential energy is minimum. When theta is 90, the potential energy is zero. When theta is 180, the potential energy is maximum. Okay? In the first case, the vector mu is parallel to B. In the third case, the vector mu is anti-parallel to B. In the, in the second case, the vector mu is perpendicular to B. Okay? Let's try to discuss this according to the motor example. In this case, where is our vector B? The current flows into the red side of the motor. We have a loop, a rectangular loop, and we have a circuit. That means we have a current through this loop. We will produce here a magnetic field using these two bar magnets oriented or directed from the North Pole to the South Pole. And it's a uniform magnetic field between these two bar magnets. Okay, directed to the right. The vector mu is where? The vector mu is downward using the right hand rule. Put your finger, wrap your fingers around the perimeter of the loop in the direction of the current, and your thumb will be downward. So the angle between the two is how much here? It's 90 degrees. 90 degrees, that means the potential energy is zero. Okay. Therefore, the magnetic torque causes a rotor to spin counterclockwise. 
Here we talk about the, the torque. The torque is what? As we said, it's mu cross cross B, mu of the of the loop. Cross B. Let's apply the right hand rule to get the direction of the torque. So it's gonna be put your fingers downward. Yeah. What will be the direction of the force in this case? The torque is like this, direct the power, like this. This is the vector torque. What will be the direction of the force on this side? L, the vector L is in this direction. The vector B in this direction. Put your fingers toward. Put your fingers toward the vector L, carry your fingers toward B, and your thumb will be downward, so the force will be downward. If there is a force downward, and here, there is a force, this is the vector L, L, B, upward force. And here, upward force. F, and here, downward force. F, what happened to this loop? This loop will rotate. Okay, this loop will rotate. At this position, there is no current because you see that there is a gap between these two rings. There is no current. However, due to the energy, uh, to the inertia, this loop will uh, still rotating. At this, uh, at this position, what happened here? The current direction is inverted. Okay. And we will have also, also we have rotational motion, but we'll continue. For example, at this stage, Okay, so we are done. This is the principle of the motor. Rank the magnitude of the torque acting on the rectangular loops shown below, from the highest to the lowest. All loops are identical and carry the same current. Same current. Our torque at first, we have one loop, so it's going to be I, A, B sine theta. We have the same, uh, the same current. We have the same loop because it's identical loops. We have the same magnetic field. So which one will make difference? Theta. Theta between what and what? Theta between the vector A and the vector B. OK. The vector A is a vector. The vector A is a vector area perpendicular to the plane of the loop. So it's going to be. And it's the, uh, it can be in this direction or in this direction. Which one we will use? Wrap your fingers around the perimeter of the loop in the direction of the current. The current on the top is out of the page and into the page. So the vector area would be to the right. So this is wrong. We will cancel this. So this is the direction of the vector area. And the vector magnetic field in the same direction. So theta in this case is zero. If theta is zero, sine theta, how much? Is zero. That means the torque. On the first case, is zero. In the second case, wrap your fingers around the perimeter of the loop, and your thumb will be upward. This is the vector area A, or the, the vector mu, also the edge of it. What is the angle between B and A? It's around 45, 45 degrees. So what we're going to get? Tau, in this case, is going to be I, A, B, Sine 45. What about this case? The vector area would be like that, and the angle is a 90. So what we're going to get? Tau in the case C, it's going to be I, A, B, sine 90, which is a 1. What is the maximum? This is the maximum. Sine 45, sine 90, is greater than sine 45, of course, because this is how much? Sine 90, not 40. Sine 90 is 1. And for sure, the sine is always low, low, uh, smaller than 1. OK, so we can write like that. Tau C is greater than tau B, which is greater than tau A. We are done. Let's continue. We have some examples, and then we will move to the class activities. OK. A circular coil 
of 0.05 meter in radius, the radius of the circular coil is 0.05, which uh, uh, with uh, 30 turns, the number of turns is 30. Line in horizontal plane, it carry current I equal 5 ampere in counterclockwise sense as shown in the figure. This is the direction of the current. The coil is in uniform magnetic field directed toward the right with a magnitude 1.2 Tesla. Find the magnitude of the magnetic moment dipole, dipole moment, and the torque on the coil. Here he is asking about the coil. Let's start by the first part of the question. Magnetic moment dipole. Dipole moment. Of the coil. And our coil is composed of n turns. So it's going to be mu of the coil equal the number of the coil multiplied by mu of one loop. So it's going to be n multiplied by i multiplied by a. And a is the area. We have circular loop, that means n i i r squared. We are done. So we can write that mu of the coil is going to be the number of turns, which is 30, the current, which is 5, pi multiplied by r squared 0 0.05 power 2. We're going to get 1.41, uh, sorry, what is it? 1.18 ampere meter squared. 1.18 ampere meter squared. This is the mu of the coil. Now let's move to the second part of the question. It said, what is the what is the torque, the total torque? Torque. Torque on the coil. So as you know, the torque of the coil is going to be mu of the coil multiplied by magnetic field B multiplied by sine of theta, and theta is the angle between B and mu. So what we're going to write? It will be like that. Mu of the coil, how much? 1.18. Multiplied by the magnetic field, 1.2. Multiplied by sine, the angle between mu and B. It's going to be 90, sine 90. So what would be the result? 1.40. 1 Newton meter squared. It's okay, uh, Newton meter, sorry, 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 Newton meter. It's okay. So we are done. This is the, we have a second question, and this question said, if the coil rotates from its initial position, oh, sorry. Okay, so the question said, if the coil rotates from its initial position, initial initial position, that means theta equal 90. Theta between mu and b is 90. The one in which mu is parallel to b. Parallel to b means theta final is zero. Okay, what is the change of the potential energy? Delta u equal u2 minus u1, which is equal minus mu b, factor of cosine theta final minus cosine theta initial. Why? Because as you know, u is equal minus mu b. Of course, this is for the coil. We are talking about coil. So it's going to be minus mu b cosine theta. OK, let's come back to this question. So it's going to be minus mu of the coil. Mu of the coil, how much we said? 1.18 minus 1.18 multiplied by 1.2 uh, for the magnetic field, multiplied by cosine theta final, theta final is zero, minus cosine theta initial, which is 90. This is zero, and this is one. 
How much will we get? We will get minus 1.41 Joule. So delta U, when the coil rotates from each initial position 90, to which U is parallel to the magnetic field B, in this case, the change of the potential energy will be negative 1.41 Joule. It's okay. So we are done. Let's move to the class activity. Class activities. Question number uh, number eight. A circular loop of wire carries a constant current. The current is the same. It's constant. If the loop is placed in uniform magnetic field, the net magnetic force on the loop is perpendicular to the plan of the loop in a direction given by the right hand rule, perpendicular to the plan of the loop in a direction given by the left hand rule, in the uh, is the same direction as the loop zero. The answer depends on the magnitude and the direction of the current and on the magnitude and the direction of the magnetic field. Circular loop. Circular loop means close it, circuit. What will be the total magnetic force exerted on the on the, on the closed loop? It's going to be zero. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is D. Okay, the total magnetic force is D because we are talking about closed loop, and the closed loop is a closed circuit. So that means the total magnetic force is zero. A circular loop of wire carries a constant current if the loop is placed in uniform magnetic field, so now the net magnetic torque of the loop tends to orient the loop so that its plan is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field, tends to orient the loop so that its plan uh, is edge on to the direction of the magnetic field, tends to make the loop uh, rotate around its axis zero, or the answer depends on the magnetic The current loop is placed in magnetic field as shown below. The loop tends to rotate the left side up, rotate right side up, rotate the bottom side up, rotate the top side down, uh, up or none of the above, it will stay at the same position. Here we have a magnetic field directed to the left and we have a circular loop, uh, sorry, uh, we have a rectangular loop. We have four sides. Let's say this is side one, two, three, and four. Let's see what, what is the direction of, uh, uh, what is the direction of, uh, of the forces. I will, I will explain step by step. We can answer this question in two different ways, based on tau equal I, I A cross B, or we can uh, uh, see the directions of the force and we can uh, interpret uh, the rotation and the torque exerted by the force on this uh, Edges, all sides. Okay, so, and the first uh, side one, you see that uh, the direction L, the direction of L1, is in the same direction as uh, B. So the force here, F1, is zero. What about F3? F3 is out, uh, is uh, to the uh, to the to the right, the, the magnetic field to the left. So also, F is zero. Here down to the right, so it's going to be into the page, the force. F2 is going to be into the page. And F4, it will be out of the page using the right-hand rule because the vector L is upward. Okay. Now, if we see from the above, as we did before, what is it? Yes. as we did in this example. If we see from the top, what is the difference between these two? We have the same shape, we have the same direction of the current, but the magnetic field is opposite. So in our case, in our case, what we're gonna get if we see from the top, we have a force like that. And we have a force like this. So what we can say, it will rotate in this direction. Okay? 
Sorry, it's the opposite, totally the opposite. It will rotate in this direction, counting because the, the magnetic field is opposite to the first case. So what we're gonna get? This is. So what happened to the right side? It would be up, right side up. What is it? Right side up. Okay. Good. Let's continue. We have one more question. When a charged particle moves through a magnetic field, the trajectory of the particle at a given point is parallel to the magnetic field line that passes through point perpendicular to the magnetic field line that passes through that point, neither parallel or, par parallel or perpendicular to the magnetic field uh, that passes through that point. Any of the points depends depending on the circumstances. When a charged particle moves through the magnetic field, the trajectory of the particle at a given point is, how is it? F equal U B cross B. Yes. The magnetic field, the trajectory, how is it to the magnetic field? It's not, it's not, uh, it depends on some circumstances. It can be parallel, it can be perpendicular, can be, can may, make an angle. So the answer is D. None of the above, depending on the circumstances. Okay, a charged particle moves through the region of the space that has both a uniform electric field and uniform magnetic field in order for the particle to move through the region at constant speed. We have charged particle and constant speed. Constant speed means acceleration is zero. Means the work done by the electric field is zero. As we know, there is no work done by the magnetic field on the charged particle. So only the electric field does work. In this case, the electric field and the magnetic field must be in the same direction. No. If they are in the same direction, we have electric field. So that means we have acceleration. No. They are opposite in direction. No, we have deceleration. The electric field and the magnetic field must be in perpendicular direction. Yes. The answer depends on the sign. No, whatever the sign. And like that, we will be done with this uh, chapter 27. Thank you so much. See you in chapter 28.